Disc bearings are sometimes used under steel or pre-stressed girders in situations where loads or movements make steel reinforced elastomeric bearing pads impractical. This video will demonstrate the proper way to set disc bearings with respect to temperature variations, beam end rotation, and skew. Prior to setting any bearings or girders, the distances should be checked from anchor bolt to anchor bolt. This should be done both before and after the cap pours. The goal in laying out the bearings is to orient the sole plate and the masonry plate at 60 degrees Fahrenheit under the center line of the girder and with the deck cast have all elements line up at the center line of bearing. The plate should include a bearing sheet similar to this. The sheet shown is for pot bearings but the same process applies for disc and some other types of bearings. There are details for the fixed bearings and the expansion bearing on this sheet. There will be no adjustments for the fixed bearing since all movement should occur at the expansion end of the girder. This table is included to show the necessary adjustments which will be made while setting the plates. The bearing layout table also has a corresponding diagram showing the different elements of the system. One of the most important pieces of information shown on this diagram is the orientation. In this example, the negative sign shows that movement of an element to the left or away from the free end of the girder is considered negative. Conversely, movement to the right or toward the free end will be considered positive. The correction for end rotation should always be negative or should always be in the same direction as the lower temperature correction. Here we see that the correction for 45 degrees Fahrenheit and the correction for end rotation are both negative, which is correct. Make sure you use the correct information from the table which corresponds to the ambient temperature at the time you are setting and adjusting the bearings. End rotation can be explained as follows. The top beam is unloaded, therefore the camber is still in the beam. Notice the ends are not plumb. The bottom beam is deflected. During the deflection, the ends of the beam rotate it into a plumb position. When we make our adjustments, both the masonry plate and the sole plate will be square with the cap. If there is a skew, we will adjust for that later. To begin, the center line of bearing should have been marked on the cap. The center of each side of the masonry plate and the sole plate should also be marked. The bearing should be set on the cap with the center of the masonry plate lined up with the center line of bearing marks. First we will show an example of the adjustment to be made for an ambient temperature of 90 degrees Fahrenheit. From the table we see that the end rotation correction should be negative 3 sixteenths of an inch. This means we would need to slide the sole plate 3 sixteenths of an inch in the negative direction or away from the free end of the beam. At 90 degrees the correction for thermal expansion was 3 quarters of an inch. So we would slide the sole plate 3 quarters of an inch in the positive direction or toward the free end of the beam. Negative 3 sixteenths of an inch plus 3 quarters of an inch effectively gives us a 9 sixteenths inch correction at 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we will look at an example for 30 degrees Fahrenheit. The end rotation is the same, negative 3 sixteenths of an inch regardless of temperature. So we again slide the sole plate 3 sixteenths of an inch in the negative direction. The temperature correction in this case is 3 eighths of an inch, negative. So we'd slide the sole plate an additional 3 eighths of an inch in the negative direction for a total adjustment of negative 9 sixteenths of an inch. When the girder is set, the entire bearing will be moved to where the marks for the center of the sole plate line up with the bearing stiffener. Now the top plate is rotated to match the skew of the girder. Take care that the sole plate is not shifted along the key, but only rotated.
Now, as the girder is set, the entire bearing will be shifted to where the center line of the sole plate matches up with the bearing stiffeners. Then the girder is set. After the girders are set and before the false work and decking are installed, the girders should be welded to the sole plates and the grout pots filled with grout. This is to ensure that any movement that takes place after the girders are set is taking place along the sliding surface of the bearing and not between the sole plate and girder or between the masonry plate and the cap. If you have any questions, please contact your area construction engineer.